Welcome back. In example four, we have the integral of tangent cubed x dx. Now in this case, we have an odd power of tangent, but we don't see any secants at all. Um, but when we see that odd power of tangent, we might be thinking, okay, if we can pull aside a secant x tangent x, if we can take one of those tangents down to have an even number, of, uh, even power of tangents left, we can convert those tangents into secants and then let u equal secant. Then the derivative would be appearing right uh, with the dx, it would be secant x, the derivative of uh, secant x would be secant x tangent x. So uh, we'll give that a try. We're going to save a secant x tangent x to the right. Now I can almost hear you be saying this, what in the world is going on here? There is no secant x. How can you be pulling out a secant x when there isn't one? Well, what we can do is first off write the rest of the tangents that are left, there are two of them left, and then write a secant x down below. That way if we turn back around and multiply the secant x tangent x back in, the secant x's will cancel and the tangent x times tangent squared x will give you tangent cubed x. So this is exactly the same thing as tangent cubed x. So you can pull a secant x out of thin air by just making sure that you uh, cancel, off, cancel it off with a secant x down on the bottom. So that's what it looks like to factor out a factor that's not even there. It's kind of like if you have x um, plus 3 and you can factor out a 2 from here. Now it doesn't look like you can factor out a 2, but if you did factor out a 2, you would have 1 half x plus 3 halves x. You would just divide each of those terms by what you factored out. Same kind of thing here. To factor out a secant x when there isn't one, you just have to divide by secant x. All right. <clears throat> Whoop, missed these. So now that we've done that, our next step is going to be to convert all the rest of those even uh, tangents into secants. Now, uh, if we remember, we have tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. So if we're trying to convert tangents into secants, we can solve this for tangent squared, and we get secant squared x minus 1. So we can replace the top then with secant squared x minus 1, leaving all the rest of this alone. All right, now we're set up for a substitution. We're going to let u equal secant x. So the du is secant x tangent x dx. The du is just waiting right there, secant x tangent x dx. So now when we replace all the secant, square, the secant x's with u's, we have u squared minus 1 all over u, and then times du. There we go. So we've greatly simplified this problem into one where we don't have trig functions anymore, we just have some polynomials. We have a rational function um, in this particular case. Now what we can do as a next step is break this fraction into two smaller fractions. Whoops, just hit the mic, sorry about that. <clears throat> you can break it into two smaller fractions. So we can write this as u squared over u minus 1 over u. But u squared over u is just u. Then we can integrate term by term. The integral of u is u squared over 2. And the integral of 1 over u is ln absolute value of u plus c, and then go back to x. So we have secant squared x over 2 minus ln absolute secant x plus c. Okay. Just for fun, let's check out another way we could have done this example. We'll do this off to the side. I'll write this in another color. So, or what we could do is break the tangent cubed into 
tangent x and tangent squared x. And uh, this one's a little bit less intuitive, uh, although <laughs> pulling out a secant x out of thin air is maybe not quite as intuitive, but at least the same substitution technique was uh, similar to the one that we learned with sine, uh, powers of sine and powers of cosine. Um, but here we're going to look at a slightly different way of looking at it. So we have the integral of tangent x times tangent squared x dx. Now we can convert the tangent squared x into uh, secant x's, just like we did above. So tangent squared x is secant squared x minus 1 dx. And we're not set up for a substitution here because if we let u equal secant x, the derivative would be secant x tangent x. Um, and we don't see a secant x tangent x here. So we could, you know, pull out a secant x out of thin air like we did, and then we, we would be back to this point. But here we're going to go with a slightly different technique. So here we're going to take the tangent x and distribute it to each of these terms. And when we distribute it, we can break up the integrals. So we'll have tan x secant x secant squared x dx minus the integral of tan x dx. Remember, you can uh, integrate, you can distribute the integral to uh, each term. So after distributing this tangent x, distribute the integral to each term across this minus operation. And now uh, it turns out that each of these integrals you can accomplish. Uh, this right here is going to be a u substitution. Let u equal tangent x. And the du would be secant squared x dx. I'm not going to go through all of the full steps here, but hopefully you can see how that would turn into the integral of u. You integrate u to get u squared over 2, and then replace the, uh, tangent, the u with tangent x. So you get tangent squared x over 2. Then with the integral of tangent, um, with the integral of tangent, you would have uh, you can replace tangent with sine x over cosine x and do a u substitution there. So remember that this is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. So you can do a u substitution, letting u equal cosine x and du equal negative sine x dx move the negative over and uh, then you can do your integral. You'll end up with a natural log in that case. So I'll put little dot dot dots here and here to say you know, the work goes on. But you'll end up with uh, tangent squared x over 2 plus uh, ln absolute value of cosine uh, x plus c. So that's another way that you could tackle this. Now looking at these answers, they look a little, di little different, but they're actually the same thing. If you think about secant as 1 over cosine, in other words, cosine to the negative 1. So if you thought about secant as cosine x to the negative 1, because that's like 1 over cosine, the negative 1 as a power can go come down in front and multiply to this negative one to give you plus ln cosine x. So uh, this step right here would make the minus ln absolute value of secant x the same thing as plus ln absolute value of cosine x. Now what about the secant squared x over two and the tangent squared x over two? Well, for that, we know that the relationship between tangent squared x and secant squared x is like this, tangent squared x plus one equals secant squared x. So, um, or you can solve this one for tangent squared x if you want to. Uh, but let's say we, we go from the secant squared x to the tangent squared x. Well, if we replace secant squared x with tangent squared x plus 1, we'll have tangent squared x plus 1 over 2. So this is actually tangent squared x over 2 plus a half. But that plus 1 half can get roped into the plus c, that constant. So this plus c and this plus c might not be the same value. In fact, they would, they would be different values. They'd be off by a half. Um, but when you write it out, you're not saying exactly what that constant is. And so secant squared x over 2 uh, with this plus c would be the same thing as tangent squared x over 2 with this plus c. It would just be different constants if you want to make these two line up uh, perfectly. So all that's to say that these two solutions, even though they look different, uh, would end up being exactly the same result. 
All right, thanks for watching uh, this part. In the next part, we're going to summarize the secant uh, and tangent kind of integrals and then try a really tough kind of integral, uh, the integral of secant cubed. See you in the next part.